Is there a medication that can extend your life, make you live healthier, make you live longer? Yes. Okay, we're going to be discussing whether or not there's a medication that can extend your health span and your lifespan. Metformin. Can a drug called metformin really add years to your life? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. A lot of patients ask me about metformin. It's usually the first drug that doctors use to treat diabetes. And in this video, by two surgeons who blend a interesting and entertaining common sense approach and evidence-based approach, we're going to hear about what they think about metformin. Be sure to wait till the end where I give my final thoughts. So always consider the source. And I have to say these guys do pretty well to review evidence and then also give a common sense view about things. I don't always agree with their nutritional recommendations, but that's okay. So let's see what they say about metformin. Okay, it, so, so where did metformin come from? Well, metformin is not new at all. It's nope. been around for over 100 years. 102 years, 1922. Okay, 102 years it's been around. So it's off patent. Yes. So it's not got one drug company that's doing that's funding major trials with it. That's one of the challenges with research. If a, a drug company doesn't have any commercial interest in it, then all of a sudden there's not a ton of research money. It's ironic, no research money, but it's cheap to buy. So well, that's kinda, why. Yeah, yeah. Because and, and the other good thing about it is that there's a lot of long-term follow. -up. People have taken this for a long time. So if there was something sinister, typically related yeah. to long-term use, it likely would have been revealed so far. So that's a good point, that if a medicine's been around a long time and there hasn't been something terrible associated with it, there's a safety margin there. The converse of that is you don't want to be the first patient to ever try a drug <laughs> in a clinical trial. Or I mean, we actually rely on people to take that first step. but. Even when a drug is FDA approved, it's gone through that process. We still learn a lot about the drug once it gets out on the market. So something that's been around like metformin for a long time, there's a certain familiarity and safety profile that goes along with it. Of course, always consider the context of also what people are doing when they take metformin. The studies that I know about are when people have diabetes or when they're eating carbs, which always raises the question to me, if you really need a pill or a drug, if you're not eating carbs, even if it helped under the situation of people eating carbs, you may not need it. So we typically reverse type two diabetes. I take people off metformin all the time because they no longer need it for the treatment of diabetes. But we're going to get into the non-diabetes emphasis here of longevity. The idea of can metformin prolong your life and give you longer, healthier life. I'd like to give a big thank you to our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element offers a fantastic science-backed mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, essential electrolytes for anyone on a keto diet. In particular, their raw, unflavored version, which comes in the blue, teal-colored package, is a great choice. This specific version contains no stevia, no sugar, or any additives, just the three vital electrolytes your body needs, already perfectly measured for you. It's an excellent addition to a keto diet, and more importantly, it tastes great. As you may know, electrolytes play a crucial role, especially for those following a keto or carnivore lifestyle. Element is giving you the chance to try it out with a free sample pack included in any purchase. That means you'll receive eight single serving packets at no extra cost with your order. It's a perfect way to test it out and even share Element with a friend. Get yours now at drinkelementy.com slash Eric Westman. This special offer is only available through my link, drinkelementy.com slash Eric Westman. You'll also find it in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. Yeah, true. Because yeah. it has been used a lot, a, a globally. Yes. Okay, so was it originally a diabetes medication? No. Originally, I think it originally was uh, developed by um, Werner and Bell. Yes. It's always two guys, eh? Watson and Crick, yeah. Banting and Best, yeah. Zalzal and Weaning, <laughs> Werner and Bell. 
Werner and Bell developed this. I think it came from the French lilac plant part Turner of it. Werner and Hooch. <laughs> One of them is not in Bell. Yeah. Um, and so that was around 1922. Yes, from malaria. Right. It wasn't designed for uh, to reduce glucose levels. It wasn't designed to make people live longer. Right. Uh, and I don't think those two chemists really knew what they had found there. No. Uh, but that's originally when it was designed, but didn't really get to clinical use until a little bit later. Yeah, so they, they found that later on when they're looking at all their malaria patients, they're like, hey, it's kind of weird. These people's blood glucose profiles really improved because they measured a bunch of different things in, yeah. in these studies. And they're like, hey, it actually helps people with borderline diabetes or elevated blood glucose. And they're still getting malaria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so they threw it away. That's no. So then someone else, like 30 years later, yeah. like 1950, said, hey, let's do some trials for diabetes. Or Threw it away for a while. It yeah. wasn't until like 57 when yep. in France they started using it yeah. and found that, hey, it does reduce glucose. Then and here in Canada, we were a little slower. 1972, it got approved okay. by yep. Health Canada. Yeah, it came in with the bell bottoms. And which is super weird. 1994 in the U.S. because they were so worried about lactic acidosis, which is one of the complications with this medication. So in the U.S., it's only been there for like 30 years. Right. We picked it up wow. with uh, Disco. They picked it up with Grunge yeah, that's right. in the 90s. All right. <laughs> well, so um, often medicines are studied for something, and then they're found to have a side effect. And then that side effect is picked up as the new use for the medicine. So that, that's kind of a common tale for many different types of medications. It didn't work for malaria, but it works for glucose reduction. And then time passing is fascinating how some things just take the passage of time to, to get reevaluated or picked up again. First thing to put out there is there's no randomized clinical trial that shows that metformin will, will make you live longer right nope. now. There have been a few randomized controlled trials in people who are not diabetic that have shown specific benefits for small trials, short follow-up, and that's kind of the the launching pad yes. for some of, for the trial that's going on, but let's not yeah. do that yet. Yeah, there are some trust studies that have shown that, yeah, hey, it'll stop you from getting diabetes if yeah. you did before, but no study that's rigorous enough to get the approval, uh, to, put, to get it on the label. Right, agreed. Okay, so that... How does, how does it work? Oh, uh, metformin is a uh, guanidine. Yes. Beautiful name yeah. for a I think daughter. it's actually biguanidine. I think there's two rings that are kind yeah. of attached. Yeah, and there is, and actually, until... 2005, they had the what it looked like wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They thought it looked like one thing, thought it was a two-dimensional molecule and whatever, but then with the advantage of computational chemistry and uh, better understanding of quantum mechanics, after 2005, we say, oh, this is a 3D sort of it's molecule. Lost a bunch of our viewers there. It's okay, they're come back because of the hook. Yeah. They got to come back to know how to spell it at the end because okay. you gave away the hook. Okay. So don't blame me. So uh, it's a 3D thing, and it, yeah. it actually changes its shape according to the pH. Yes. Yeah, it's hydrophilic, so it loves to stick to water. What does uh, it do? Uh, People are like, at the end of the day, thanks, Paul, for the yeah. history of, of guanidine molecule and its structure. Yeah. What does it do? How does it work? So it, I, I would say the main way that metformin helps people with type 2 diabetes and potentially improve longevity is through the AMP kinase model, right. the mechanism. <laughs> well, boy, they're getting into the weeds here a bit. I would explain that metformin works by facilitating the effect of insulin. And this is where we're getting into the, the weeds of, you know, how to best communicate things. It uh, lowers the blood glucose, facilitates the in insulin effect, so that that I think most people understand rather than getting into the intracellular mechanism. Of course, if you want to know what's going on inside the cell, that's okay too. But so metformin is medicine that using other terms can reduce insulin resistance. Or so when you think about other treatments that can affect insulin, low carb diets, lower, even low calorie diets, but low carb keto diets, improve insulin resistance. So now factor in whether a medicine that does that and a diet that does that, whether you need both or not. And the context of the metformin studies have been among carb eaters. Happening in your mitochondria. Right. Right so now as we speak. All of our cells have this enzyme. What happens is this enzyme is typically activated during a fasting type state. So what happens is ATP is the, the lowest kind of currency of energy for our cells. Right. When that ATP is, is broken down, so when a, one of the phosphates of the triphosphate is taken away, that releases a bunch of energy. That's how we use it to do things with our cells. 
yeah. as you as energy becomes less um, available, then you take off a second phosphate group and make ADP to AMP. This is a less efficient process, less energy is released, but it, it's like when you're fasting. So this pathway is one of the key pathways that is activated with metformin rather than having to fast. And I'm losing people here. Okay. And so the main thing that it does is it talks to your liver and says, hey, liver, stop using gluconeogenesis or the making of glucose um, as the main way and shifts it to fatty oxidation. Right. So other pathways that are activated also when you fast. Right. This is, these are probably the main ways that it does. It reduces your blood sugar, improves insulin sensitivity, and turns on the AMPK pathway. Right. Thank you for that it's a really dissertation. Important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it mimics the fasting. Where have you heard that before? Intermittent fasting, going for a few days without eating. So, And then he talks about enhancing fatty acid utilization. Well, that's what happens automatically when you stop eating carbohydrates. Your body shifts from the carb burning that it used to do to the fatty acid burning that it will do. And here a drug can help you do it or a diet can help you do that as well. Um, and then, and so basically, now where were we? We're talking about the fact that it's um, being repurposed yes. to look at aging. And the there is a group interested in this. Yes. And they put together the TAME trial. Right. All so, right. So targeting aging with metformin. So T, A, and then M, E for metformin. Right. It was it's actually, clever. but the article's called Metformin as a Tool to Target Aging. Yes. And they didn't want to call it the MATE study, I guess, because that has some... I bet it's already been used. The mate study? My guess is. Other implications to that name. Yeah. So um, we're going to put a link to it in the description because it's a public access document. You can read it if you want, if you're interested in what's happening. But it hasn't been done. Like, the no. trial is ongoing, so there's no paper right. we're talking about the results yet. Their goal is to enroll 3,000. Right. Follow them for six years. Right. And I believe they've enrolled 1,700. And the main reason more haven't been done, this started in 2016, Right. is funding. Right. They're looking for more money. Remember we said this is off patent. There's no thing, yeah. uh, no one funding this from yeah. a commercialization point of view. And the interesting thing is they're not looking just at one specific outcome. They're looking at a composite of outcomes yep. uh, that include cardiovascular disease, cancer, yep. dementia, yep. and death or all-cause mortality. You know, if you stop on this figure, this is all the same thing that a low-carb diet does. So a lifestyle change can have these same effects and, and finding out that the mechanisms are very similar. So take a pill, get the effect, change the diet, get the effect. Kind of leads to the next question of it, it, would taking the pill and do the diet have better effect well, we're going to hear about some side effects that might come with metformin and any medicine for that matter. When you do adding a medicine to the diet, you have to consider whether the side effects or risk and even costs are worth it. Yeah. So instead of looking at one specific function, which is what you normally do when you study a drug, is you look at one outcome with some secondary outcomes, they're looking at a composite of outcomes of all these things. And, and there have been studies in non-diabetic people, pilot studies, one that showed a significant reduction in inflammatory markers like IL-6, tumor necrosis factor, and ESR. There have been other studies that have shown improved insulin sensitivity as well as uh, reduced fasting blood glucose. Right, and actually, they, and that, as they allude to it in their justification for this, they talk about the different studies and the effects on different body systems. Right. And it includes even cognitive function. Yep. They've got some evidence that shows it, it improves cognitive function. Once some people talk about diabetes being, you know, type 3 diabetes being Alzheimer's. Right. Or dementia, that's like a thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, the decreased mortality, of course, what we're looking at. Yep. Um, and basically other composite outcomes that sort of are attributed with natural aging. Yeah, and some of the other thoughts behind metformin, why it potentially is beneficial, is because that fasted state is a time when our bodies are um, cleaning up some of the mess, right. reducing oxidation, so even the little caps, there's something called telomeres on the end of our chromosomes, these yes. get shorter as we age, and they think that this might reduce the rate of shortening of our telomeres, and there are certain pathways, something called the mTOR pathway, that is also associated with aging that may be reduced. So it's all designed almost like a protective mechanism. So, And some people liken the, the fasting and the metformin to be a way that, hey, listen, when we didn't have access to food constantly, yeah. this is how we survive, and this is why it's probably beneficial. And maybe 
Similarly, because we have constant access to food, maybe this is why we're sicker, because you're never activating any of these pathways anymore, because you right. just always have food. Your body never has to say, hey, guys, maybe we should conserve a little bit. Maybe we should do some house cleaning here. Right. Because you just have food all the time, and they, they really believe that this is part of why we're where we are today. So the intermittent fasting people would. Yeah, I think that's a recurring theme that now is percolated through to teaching of the general public, which is eating less and less often is a good thing. I say it in that way because many of you, especially if you're one of my patients, you come to me thinking, well, I've been taught I need to eat three meals a day and snacks, and this is one of the mindset changes that I help people to unlearn. I mean, you wouldn't go to the gas station and fill up five times a day if you're already on full and you're only driving around town, would you? I mean, so the idea of fueling multiple times a day really doesn't make sense, especially when you're trying to lose weight or reverse type 2 diabetes. You want that fasted or, or not consuming food at that. You want that period of time, even one meal a day to me is just fine, as long as the food that you eat is particularly nutritious. Fair enough. I think if I was unable or not motivated to exercise or to fast, and I maybe carried a moderate amount of excess weight, even though I wasn't diabetic, I definitely would be interested. Okay. What about you? Uh, no. Because you don't want to live longer, or? <laughs> no. Okay, yeah. I'm curious. No. Some you're like, you know what, I'll just take whatever I got. No, I would not take it because uh, I think, I agree in the sense that with lifestyle modifications, you can achieve the same benefit that this, they're looking for with metformin. Yeah. I don't think metformin in any way is going to do better than, you know, a good diet and good exercise. Stress reduction. Right. Sleep, all the, all the pillars of health that we yes. talked about. I honestly think those things. And I'm not a big fan of replacing a lifestyle uh, modification with a pill, sure. personally. Yeah. Others may. Let us know. When I think that it's almost like steroids, right? Some are like, well, why don't you just work harder? Well, because I, I can't. I get, yeah. The benefit can be exceeded. And I'm, I'm agree with you. I get, it, for a healthy person, I'm not sure that the benefit's there. I think for people who are borderline unhealthy or obviously if you have two types of diabetes, I think. I think that's yeah. a fair take. And yeah. I think that's a pretty good take-home message from talking with docs is there that, you hey, you can achieve what these people are looking for. Yeah with metformin by getting up exercising and checking your keeping your diet in check mm -hmm. and the rest of the pillars of health leave a comment and let us know what you think about this and now you now you know now you know all about metformin you're learning about longevity and the things that cause it and it's what we always talk about inflammation oxidative stress healthy eating exercise all yeah. that stuff if you like this video please like and subscribe to our channel share it with a friend who's into longevity if i do develop type 2 diabetes i'll take it sure why not hopefully you don't have to die over here whatever well you never know you don't you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. I don't take metformin, so it doesn't surprise me that they don't take metformin either. Of course, they're pushing the right buttons, which is to change lifestyle. And metformin can be useful for prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, but you can reverse those by changing your food and a program like I teach. If you like, please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, and look for content twice a week now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.